OK, news that shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone following this space. The Australian energy market operator today released their annual electricity statement of opportunities. And it certainly makes for grim reading. Delays with the Kuri Kuri gas project, the Snowy Hydro 2 scheme is going to blow out in cost. It increases the risk of energy shortfalls from next year. Joining me now to talk about this is someone who has followed it incessantly, more than anyone else in the parliament, Matt Canavan. Senator, it's great to have you on. You're not surprised by Emo's warnings. I mean, this is the same warning you and I have been talking about for years, but what has the government responded to with this? Well, I'm not surprised, uh, uh, Corey. Uh, I wish I was wrong. Uh, I wish I was wrong, because what this report means is that... Uh, uh, it means a lot more suffering uh, for Australian families. It means power prices are not coming down soon. It means the promise that you were made uh, about a year ago at the federal election by Anthony Albanese that your bills would be cut by $275 a year just is not going to happen. And we knew that a year ago. Uh, Anthony Albanese was telling fibs and he's been proven so now. The government's response, Corey, the government's response has been everything's fine. Um, continue as normal. Uh, it's like, I mean, it, it's... It's, it's like that old naval saying here, I think, with the energy situation from this government. It's the, the punishment must continue until morale improves. Uh, I mean, people are being crushed by power bills. Uh, our electricity system is being literally held on with gaffer tape. We nearly lost power to Sydney last winter. And if we have another cold winter after the Liddell coal-fired power station shuts this year, it could be curtains. Uh, so action needs to be taken in response to these kinds of warnings. This is actually an urgent warning. It wasn't the regular report that the energy regulator does. Uh, this was something they felt like they had to put out uh, to try and get a big loudspeaker and wake people up. Unfortunately, Blackout Bowen is still asleep. Well, you make the point about blackouts, and that's exactly what the regulator is warning of. They're saying that um, if you continue down the path to net zero and you phase out coal and gas-fired power station, here come the blackouts. How can this country function without a reliable, safe, affordable and secure electricity supply? No first world nation can. Mm. Exactly right, Corey. We stand to lose uh, manufacturing jobs. Of course, as I said, power bills will be higher for Australian families than they need to be. I mean, to put what the energy regulator in co into context has warned about, they say over the next 10 years, we're actually facing a shortfall of 8,000, over 8,000 megawatts. What does that mean? That's four Liddell coal-fired power stations. So this power station that's due to shut within a few months in, in, uh, in New South Wales, it's about 2,000 megawatts. Uh, four of those we need over the next decade. Now, that, that's what we need is reliable power, or in the terms of the jargon of the regulator, dispatchable power. So solar and wind can't fill that gap. They are not dispatchable. They are not there all the time. Now, the problem we've got, though, Corey, is even the energy regulator pulls its punches. And I get, I get ostracised because I don't pull my punches. It's not the time for that. It's the time to, to, to shout loudly at people and get them to wake up. But the energy regulator says we need, we need dispatchable capacity, including in large, uh, large long, 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 st long storage, long-term storage. Now, it says later that's not batteries. So you sort of read that the first time you think it's batteries. No, batteries can't do that. Only things like pumped hydro. But we can see the mess Snowy's in. We're not getting 8,000 megawatts from pumped hydro. We actually have to build coal and gas. That's the fine print of this report. Or even nuclear, if we could do that in 10 years. But uh, who's, who in the government saying that or admitting that? Unfortunately, it looks like we're just going to have to go through the school of hard knocks. Yeah, it's going to be a very tough time. Um, we did learn just this afternoon, though, that on Friday, Environment Minister Tanya Plibersek gave the green light to gas company Santos for an expansion project in uh, Queensland. Now, personally, I was surprised by this. It's good news, but I think it's bad timing for Labor, given the Greens are applying pressure over any new gas projects. Uh, do you welcome this decision by Tanya Plibersek? Oh, well, of course I'd welcome approvals. That's, that's great. It's great to do those sort of things. But, you know, as the old saying goes, Corey, there's uh, uh, no conspiracies, but there are no coincidences either. And I'm just worried that the timing of this is actually about softening us up for that Greens deal. You know, the timing that they've just slipped this out there is in preparation uh, of, of, of tilling this ground to say to actually do a... Uh, a major deal with the Greens on their new carbon tax, on Labor's new carbon tax, which will just push up power prices more. Uh, and then they'll say, oh, no, but we're not Greens because we just approved that big gas field, even though that gas field probably won't happen 
under a Labor carbon tax and certainly not under Labor's energy intervention price fixing regulations they've got in place. And so, yeah, approvals are great, but uh, as I say, it's sort of... It, 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 things happen for a reason in politics and I'm worried that that might be the reason in this case. No conspiracies, just coincidences. I like it. Hey, Matt, can I just change tune just for a <laughs> quick moment? Uh, yesterday afternoon, Premier Palaszczuk in Queensland announced a big backflip over youth crime. That's, uh, it's been an epidemic affecting much of Queensland. You and I know have been working very hard with opposition leader David, David Crisofulli up there. You've been instrumental about bringing change to this area. Were you pleased by the Premier's announcement or is it too little too late? Well... Can I first say uh, thanks for the credit, but but it's really a lot of the people that have got behind this. Uh, Julie West, uh, just a grandmother from the Sunshine Coast, she's she's led a petition. 150,000 Queenslanders have signed. That's what's led to this change. Unfortunately, Anastasia Palaszczuk doesn't listen to me, but eventually she does listen to 150,000 Queenslanders. Look, it's a step in the right direction, Corey, but it doesn't go far enough. Uh, I mean, all this does is say if you breach a bail condition, uh, you can be locked up for that. I mean, I would you have thought that would already be the law, but apparently it's not in Queensland. The Labor Party also made detention a last resort. So a few years ago in 2019, they changed the law for young, for juveniles, and told judges that only in the last resort should you put someone away. Bail should be your default response. And that has led to a 60% increase in unlawful entries from juveniles. They're not, to my knowledge, proposing to roll that back. And again, this is sort of hypocritical nature of the Queensland government. They're out there blaming judges for doing just exactly what they asked them to do. Uh, we should not be putting kids who repeatedly commit uh, breaches of the law back onto the gangs of the streets. That's not good for them. It's not good for society. We need to find a better way.